Explosive one, and we got a special, an illustrious. We got Jeremiah's back. Hi, guys. <laughs> Day four. <laughs> we're all in the same clothes. Look at that. So, uh, anyways, uh, we're we gonna have stick no with money. the. We, yeah, if we're just. This is the only shirt yeah, I this own. This is my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, it's your, you own it? No, no. It's my shirt. No, That's the only my shirt. My name on it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I like it. So, anyways, uh, all right, let's go with. Uh, who is the most influential person that you've ever met? And if you don't have somebody you've met, we'll we'll, we'll open it up to uh, in general, like so, like like whether it's like so, like videos you've watched or you know is whatever that you've met or that you've never met. Which one? Uh, you had sent me met, so we'll say either you've met in person or some, or we can even open it up to like I've never met this person, but like I really follow this person's writings or like whatever. Uh, I don't know. What about you, Jonas? Kick us off. I don't like being put on the spot, man. Uh, but you do it to everybody else. Yeah. I mean, that's isn't that what isn't that what the person who leads the conversation does? They put no. it all on everyone else, and then they come back later. Dude, I'm, I always pretend that I'm funny, but really, I play off everybody else's words. I don't know how to know how to be funny by myself. So I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, no, I'm joking. Um, let's see here. I, dude, I'm really like I really don't have a. Um, you know, honestly, if I think about it, it's never anybody I've really met in person. Like. I'll probably think of somebody who's really I've met and been like, oh wow, that really made my life different. But like, honestly, I think back to like when I was started reading all those like utopian books back in like high school, like 1984, things like that. It and not necessarily George Orwell himself, but that genre of book. Um, it's like it made me start to realize that like in in trying to create utopia, you end up creating dystopia. So it's like no matter what, you're never gonna have a perfect world. No matter how much you want to try to change the world to make it perfect, it's never going to be perfect. Um, so in a way, that kind of helped me like realize that like to be kind of more happy with what you have and try to like make the best of a situation, then because you're always going to be chasing the purple dragon to make your life better. Oh, okay. So it's so it's like okay. yeah, cool. would I like to be in better shape, have more money, have a hotter wife, whatever the situation is? Yeah, but if you're always chasing that, when you get it, what are you gonna do? Like you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna find something else you don't have, right? Yeah, you're gonna be bored. There's nothing driving you to get so, there. So, so this is basically like an ancillary to Roe v. Wade, right? Oh, oh God, get out of here! No, no, is that no. How, is that no it's it not. Is? No. no, it's not how it is. So, um, but yeah, but that really, um, it really, uh, that that kind of like stuck with me because it's like any of those stories that you read, they yeah. all have the best intention. But it always ends up turning. I mean, eighty four is a little different. It's a little darker. Like the government has taken over and like whatever. But but they're always trying to create a perfect. And, in, and even in that book, the government's trying to create a perfect society, but they end up creating a complete communist like dystopia. So I don't know. That's that. And if I think of a person I've met in real life that really has changed my life, no, uh, I'll go. Honestly, from that's very interesting. I had no idea that, that about you, and that's that's cool. That's cool. awesome. Yeah, man. and I've known you forever. So. <laughs> Well, about either um, one of you, I don't care. Whoever wants to go first. I mean, I can go next if Jeremiah doesn't want to. It, nah, that's all good. All right, let's go. Um, I have to go f uh, a similar route that Jonas went because I, honestly, I don't put too much regard. Like, I don't have like a person who I who I would say is like my hero or like somebody I idolize. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't have that type of uh, person in my life. I guess if I had to say a person that that changed my life for the better just by their presence it'd probably be like what my my stepfather you know mm. like uh the, my, my mother remarried and i learned my love of the english language from him but if i want to say who has had like probably the greatest effect on my adult life i would have to say marcus aurelius or Epictetus, who were like some of the uh originators of stoicism didn't realize I, I had that in my heart until I started reading some of their works. And then I was like, yo, this is, this is some spicy information. And I started doing more and more research. And I realized that I've been living a, a certain lifestyle and, and thought that it was my own idea. And actually somebody had came up with it in ancient Greece. And I was like, oh, I guess I'm not a special <laughs> snowflake. 
<laughs> You're like, look at this new what thing I created that's been existed for 500 years. Yeah. That dude that said that, wait, it's not about what happens to you, it's how you react to what happens to you. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You can you can't control what happens in the world, but you can control your reaction to things mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. What's you know? that saying? It's it's ninety percent about uh, uh, it's like ten percent about what happens to you, ninety percent how you react to it, or something. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah some yeah. some phrase right. like that. Yeah. Same ideas, but mm -hmm. yeah, that that's been one of the things that has been that stuck with me over like the last I don't know five or six years now. But yeah, my, my my stepfather probably had the bigger, <laughs> had the, the brunt of it. He's definitely right, right. the reason I am who I am today. But Actitudes, <laughs> pour one, pour one out. I would have, one. I'd have to say my like if we look at people we know, that would probably be my grandma. Uh, but okay. spell check, spell check caught me. Uh, I put never met, and so now oh. I'm like scrambling for an answer, which is great. Um, my grandma was awesome, right? She, um, had believed in me no matter what I do, um, support me. So it was always kind of like, um, like having that base there, like it, to put it in baseball terms, I, I was, I'd like leading off, but I knew that I could always slide back, you know, uh, and mm. check in with grandma. She'd keep me straight. So uh, I miss her a lot. Um, someone I haven't met that's influenced me lately would probably be Wesley Willis. Um, oh God. You yeah, know, he's, Wesley Willis, oh, yeah, Willis. Yeah, he Wesley passed Willis away. was a schizophrenic dude from Chicago who um, had a keyboard that played like. You've uh, heard Lou. Wesley Willis. Yeah, and he he sang songs like "My Mother Smokes Crack Rocks," uh, "Whip Batman's I kick, Ass," "I Kick Batman's like, Ass." Mm -hmm. the, like he was just a, a weird dude, um, but he just did it. Like that he he liked to make mm -hmm. music. Uh, he put out all kinds of songs. He would carry like a um, fanny pack around his neck with the CDs in it. And he'd be peddling like, the CDs all the time. So uh, like Black Weird Owl, uh, kinda yeah, yeah. Like he was he wasn't all there, uh, but <laughs> I don't mean that in a bad way. He just straight up wasn't. But he he fucking did it. Like he, he would always he, say, uh, "Rock over London, rock out Chicago." <laughs> yep, <laughs> Polaroid. See what develops. But <laughs> he he was just. I don't know. To me, that's inspiring that he, he was limited by a normal person's standard, and yet he's doing and did – well, he's dead now, but he did what a lot of people try really hard to do um, as far as you know, being musicians. He went out and, and did it. it. It's unlike anything you've heard. Is it's, it, is it yeah. the way he did it that gets you, or is it the actual content of his music? Uh, the content of his music's silly. It, it's <laughs> fun to listen to, but it's not like – I can't – listen to wesley willis all day where yeah, like, there is a oh, classic s my dogs d that's one yeah, of his bigger yeah. songs so, s yeah, my so, dogs d yeah, s my yeah. dogs d yeah so <laughs> no i just I'm, I'm inspired that you know he just by a um stereotypical sense here's a person that didn't have a lot of options but had okay. a passion and he just fucking did it so yeah, it makes that's sense. inspiring yeah. to me. Yeah, and uh, right. you're totally right. I looked, and uh, you did send me someone you've never met, and I completely yeah. read it wrong because my brain doesn't work. Hey, and... I got to give a shout-out to my Oma, so that worked. <laughs> yeah, right, absolutely. Someone yeah, uh, I've never met, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like someone that you would like, yeah, has had an impact on you that you would want to meet, oh, I guess. Well, yeah, yeah. I'd like to meet Epictetus or yeah. Marcus Aurelius. I did say that. Yeah, so. yeah. I'm trying to think, man. I'm I'm lame. I don't have a hero. I don't have anybody that I can <laughs> ever meet. <laughs> I'm just like, man. So uh, yeah, I'm lame. I guess. I would like uh, to meet a billionaire and have a gun. <laughs> wow, you're gonna murder someone it's for their not money? It's not like they are like Fortnite and drop everything. <laughs> 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 you get, Recording just a has billion stopped. dollars falls out of the ground. Like, Send that motherfucker back to spawn. <laughs> yeah, taking all your shit. Taking all your <laughs> shit. No, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I don't like, like I said, I don't really have heroes, man. I never had one. I never, yeah, I never did really either. Never really felt like sports players when I was a kid. I never had like a bunch of. I mean, I had jerseys. I had a LeBron James jersey, but that was more just like. You know, being for the team, you know, than it was yeah. for him. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. dangerous to pick a hero, right? Like, right, exactly. Could have been an aspiring singer. Back when I was in seventh grade in and choir, we did a song called "I Believe I Can Fly." Like, oh, <laughs> say you stand on that guy. <laughs> yeah, and then twenty yeah. years later, you're yeah, like, now Whoa. you're like, I can't even play "Bump and Grind." Yeah, right. Exactly. Like, I love "Bump and Grind." I can't yeah. even rock out to it anymore. 
It's like my yeah. mind's telling me no, and I got to shut it off before I get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My ears yeah. are telling me no, too. Yeah. Yeah, ex- yeah, exactly. No, but, you know, if I think about it, you know, if, if someone who was influential back in the day when I was a kid, there was this – I used to have HBO, and I probably shouldn't have been watching HBO as a child because it was very dirty and naughty. There was a it was a it was there was a Rodney Dangerfield comedy special on there. It was called Opening Night at Rodney's Place. And it was like it had like five or six comedians. It had like some of them were actually really famous. Now it had like Tim Allen before he was famous, Jeff Foxworthy before he was famous, and some other people that never made it or whatever. And me and one of my buddies, actually Chach, we used to watch that stuff. We I recorded it on VHS and we, I would watch that over and over and over and over and like uh and then even dennis leary's no cure for cancer that that special yeah. i used to and adam sandler's like you're all gonna laugh at you and all of that really got me into like liking trying to be funny and like wanting to do like com- comedy and stand up and like having a comedic make people laugh sort of personality so i guess indirectly if i would have never found that would i have ever wanted to try to say funny things or be funny or you know <laughs> And I mean, this obviously, the genesis of you finding out that funniness works. Yeah, yeah maybe I would have been like a crass a hole or just like a dull dullard. Like I'd just be like, "Oh, did you guys hear about that new pipe coming out this weekend? I got some got some tobacco for it." That'd be that, me. That, 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 <laughs> I would not want to talk to you. <laughs> Speaking right, of right. which, uh, who's the the comedian that just passed away? Not Bob Saget, the other guy, Norm Macdonald. Yes. He has. Oh, Norm McDonald new, was awesome. He has a new comedy special coming out. Oh, like he had one recorded before he, he passed away. He had one recorded before he uh, he passed away. And I uh, really do like Norm McDonald's style of uh, stand up. Like his yeah. so dry, deadpan. Like it, and it's oh. stuff he says isn't even funny, but the way he said it, it is yeah. funny. Like it's like no one could do this like what he does. You don't have. He's no- my favorite weekend update anchor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Until he have- said fuck on the air and got fired. You don't have jokesness <laughs> like that. You don't have like Mitch Hedberg's or uh, Norm McDonald's anymore. Not mm-hmm. quite no. like that. You know, no. where it's like not every joke is going to land, but they're still funny just because like. Well, as worst to Bob Saget, it was a bunch of jokes from like a 40s joke book. It was, <laughs> it was like intentionally awful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was like Andy Kaufman's another example that just like he maybe might be a more extreme version of that. Like, I think it's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you see Norm Macdonald on those uh, those Kaufman. roasts, and he always made like the most wholesome jokes about. It. Everyone would just like stare at him. Yeah. But those were the ones I laughed at the most. You know, <laughs> just like he would just say some ignorant, something stupid and ignorant. Like it's just like when they came out with him as uh, Colonel Sanders, that uh, made my heart happy. <laughs> He's like, I'm the real Colonel Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness. So, anyways, I forgot to set the timer again because I'm trash. So, that's all the time we have for today's episode. Please make sure to like and subscribe at uh, crazytown.com. For Jonas. TNT. Jeremiah. Uh, we out.